coming up next on Ministry Spotlight. He's a wonderful God. God all by himself. God who woke me up this morning all by himself. God who got me out the bed this morning all by himself. God who allowed me to keep me in my right mind all by himself. God who kept me in a pandemic all by himself. The God who kept my body all by himself. Tell your neighbor he's a miracle working God. I will be coming out of the book of Daniel, chapter 3. The familiar book of Daniel, chapter 3. And I will be starting at the 14th verse. And it reads, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace, and then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego reply, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves to you. If you throw us into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve will save us. He will rescue us from your power. But even if he does not, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have served up. Verse 19, Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we throw three men in the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Verse 25, look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound, walking around and unharmed, and the fourth one looks like a god. Amen. Today I would like to come to you off the subject title of, I'm stronger than the furnace. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm stronger than the furnace. Hananiah. Mishael and Azariah from the tribe of Judah were chosen by the king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, to serve in the royal palace. The three Hebrew boys' names were changed to Babylonian names, which were their slaves' names that stripped them from their heritage and ancestry. Hananiah was changed to Shadrach, Mishael was changed to Meshach, and Azariah was changed to Abednego. And Nebuchadnezzar created an image of gold to tell the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that he would not get in the way of the plans for his kingdom. In the book of Daniel chapter 3, you all, we see the dispute of King Nebuchadnezzar and the three Hebrew boys. The dispute was that they would not worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. The statue stood, you are 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. It was commanded that at the sound of the musical instruments that everyone would have to bow, but because of the Hebrew boys' Jewish culture, they would not serve. Nebuchadnezzar tries to hold his anger because of his past favor for them and he tries to give them another opportunity to try again with another answer. For he said in verse 15, I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have put up when you hear the magical instruments and then what God will save you from my power. You are, I see three things in this text, and I promise you I'll get out of your way, but the first thing that I see is that these Hebrew boys would not bow. 
the Hebrew boys replied and said, we don't have to explain ourselves to you. If you throw us in the fire, the God whom we serve will save us. Let's get something straight. And even if he does not, we still will not bow. Even while facing the struggles of life, we will not bow. Facing death, we will not bow. Facing a fiery furnace, we still will not bow to the ways of Satan because my God that I serve is, has the power to do anything. Ladies and gentlemen, I came to tell you that if you stand for nothing, then you'll surely fall for anything. They did not compromise. They did not make up an excuse. They did not throw a pity party. All they had to do was rely on God. They were young and they were the only ones who kept their trust in God. For 1 Timothy 4 and 12 says, let no man despise you for your youth, but set up the believers an example in speech and conduct in love and faith and in purity. Their faith, you all, is what got them out of, their faith is what got them into trouble, but it was also their faith that got them out. God wants to see you, ladies and gentlemen, if you can trust him as much as you verbalize that you can trust him. We need to gain faith like these Hebrew boys because their faith in God caused them not to surrender or grow weary. If some of us were facing the furnace, how many of us can say, I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to bow to depression. I'm not going to bow to anxiety. I'm not going to bow to anger. I'm not going to bow to the devil. I'm not going to bow to weed or drugs or alcohol, but I will only serve the true and living God. If I cannot live for what's worth dying for, then you can take everything I got. You can take my money if you want to. You can take my life if you want to. Come on, catch up with me. You can take my car if you want. You can walk out on me if you choose, but you will not be able to take my God from me because I refuse to bow. I will not quit because I have faced hard times, but instead I will trust in the Lord that he will bring me out. But secondly, you all, I see that these Hebrew boys would not bend. The Hebrew boys would not bend because they were committed to God. Because they said, even if he does not, we will never serve your God. There are so many people, you all, who have faith in God, but are not committed to God. How real is your faith, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not hold on to God through the rough and hard times? True commitment says that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth, in my good days, in my bad days, when I'm up or when I'm down, when I'm balling out of control or when I'm broker than a joke, when I'm a shelter in place or when I can't go to church or when I can't go to church, when I feel like praising him, when I don't feel like praising him, his name shall continually be in my mouth, not one time, not two times, but be in my mouth always. We have to be committed to God. In this season where we feel like the world is going crazy, our commitment to him will carry us through this. The coronavirus, he will carry us through this. Through the hard times that we're going through, he will carry us through this. All you have to do is put your trust in the Lord that he will hold you in the palm of his hand and hold you and keep you, that he will lead you out of darkness. Nebuchadnezzar, you all, got so frustrated that they did not bow, that he commanded the fire to be seven times hotter than usual. The Bible says in verse 20 and 21 that Nebuchadnezzar commanded the strongest men in the army to put the Hebrew boys in the fire. They were dressed up in all their clothes, their turbans, their pants, and got thrown into the fire. In verse 22, you all, we see something crazy happen. In verse 22, the Bible says that the fire was so hot that it killed the guards that threw them in there. But watch this, hold on. Shadrach and the Meshach and Bendigo didn't fall in the furnace until verse 23. So wouldn't it be that the Hebrew boy should have died with the guards in verse 22? Come on, y'all not talking back to me. 
Isn't it crazy, you all, how the people that try to harm you, burn you, talk about you, dislike you, those shade on your name, get burnt, get messed up, and to get a taste of their own medicine, and the people that try to raise hell and your life get hell back into their lives, tell your neighbor, don't touch them, just tell them, don't mess with the Lord's children. Some of the trouble that we go through, you all, we can put ourselves into. The devil can put us into some trouble. But sometimes, you all, I'm a firm believer that sometimes we have to go through some things to find out who God really is. Sometimes you'll have to get sick, you all, so that he can show you that he's a healer. Sometimes you'll have to be put in trouble's way so that he can show you that he's a protector. And sometimes you'll have to face some addictions so he can show you that he's a deliverer. And sometimes you'll have to face depression and anxiety so that he can show you that he's a mind regulator. And sometimes you'll just have to face death so that he can show you that he's a miracle working God. He's God and he's God all by himself. Tell your neighbor he's God and he's God all by himself. He's sovereign. He does what he want to do. He talks to who he want to talk to. He uses who he want to use. He carries on who he wants to carry on. He anoints who he wants to anoint. He blesses who he wants to bless. God is sovereign. He's a wonderful God. God all by himself. God who woke me up this morning all by himself. God who got me out the bed this morning all by himself. God who allowed me to keep me in my right mind all by himself. God who kept me in a pandemic all by himself. The God who kept my body all by himself. Tell your neighbor he's a miracle working God. We will be right back. And the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar jumped to his feet in amazement. He was amazed at the fact that anyone could survive for a moment that killed someone at the door. My God, today. He asked his officials, didn't we throw three men into the furnace? He told them, I thought we tied three men into the furnace. He sees three men in the furnace. But he said, then why, if you put three men in the furnace, why do I see four men in the furnace? Nebuchadnezzar said they're not tied up. They're walking around. They don't even show that they've been hurt, and the fourth one looks like a god. I will hope y'all will help me preach today. If you would just get some adrenaline and let the Holy Ghost talk to you and help me preach this thing, God showed up in the middle of a furnace. Ladies and gentlemen, I came to let you know today that whatever situation you are facing, God will step right in it. But not only Will he be with you, but he will cut the chains and allow you to be free in the midst of your situation. They were walking freely in the fire. It doesn't matter if he takes you out of the fire, ladies and gentlemen, but it's what really matters is if the Lord shows up with you in the middle of your furnace. Oh, how good it feels to know that Jesus will step in the fire with you, knowing that Jesus will step in every situation that you're standing. Oh, how good it feels to know that God will never leave us nor forsake us. And when we're dealing with trouble in times, oh, how good it feels to know that the Lord will never leave me, but he sits right here as my father, directing my every step. Oh, how good it feels to know that the Lord is my shepherd and he watches over me. And every time I get out of place, he comes and gets me and brings me back. Oh, how good it feels that God is watching over me. I 
would tell somebody, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh my God, he helped me, Jesus. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Came to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, to trust in God. When you cannot see God, trust him. When you cannot feel God, trust him. When you feel alone, I came to tell you just to trust him. Lean over, tell your neighbor just to trust them, trust them, trust them. Don't touch them, but just look at him and say, trust them, trust them, trust them. When you feel like tomorrow has no purpose, I came to tell you to trust them. When you feel like your life no longer has purpose, I came to tell you to trust them. Because we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. The Bible says that when the three Hebrew boys came out of the fire, their hair was not burned. The clothes were not burned. And they didn't even smell like smoke. So I came today on holy assignment just to let you know that whatever situation you are in, when it's your time to come out, you won't look like what you've been through. You won't smell like what you've been through. You won't look like the molestation that you had to go through. You won't look like the rape that you had to go through. You won't look like the abuse that you had to go through. You won't have to go through the mind tricks that you had to go through. You won't have to go up against the things that the devil tried to put up against you. You won't look like what you've been through. Well, Yanni, how do you know that I won't look like what I've been through? I came to tell you, the reason I know why you won't look like what you've been through is because of over 2,000 years ago, our Savior, our God sent us a Savior to show us how to survive the furnace. Isn't it good to know that God never allows us to go through one thing alone, but every time we go back to the Holy Word, he shows us that every time we done been through something, somebody has already been through it. Over 2,000 years ago, you all, our Savior showed us how to survive the furnace. Jesus knew what it felt like to survive the furnace. Judas sold out Jesus, that was a furnace. Peter denied Jesus three times, that was a furnace. Do y'all mind if I close just a little bit? They whipped my Jesus all night long, that was a furnace. They put nails in his hands, that was a furnace. They put nails in his feet, that was a furnace. He had to carry his cross all the way to Calvary's hill, and that was a furnace. They whipped my Jesus all night long, and that was a furnace. They put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet. They pierced him on his side. They ripped his beard off of his face. And that was a furnace. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And that was a furnace. And he died. And that was a furnace. He stayed in the grave all Friday night. He stayed in the grave all day Saturday. And he stayed in the grave all Saturday night. That was a furnace. But is anybody in the house tonight know what happened? Early Sunday morning, I say, Got up out of the furnace. God raised Jesus out from the dead. He rose Jesus out of that furnace. So I came to let every believer in the house tonight. I came to let you know tonight that whatever furnace you are in, I came to let you know that after a little while, a little while of suffering. He will pick you up out of the furnace. Is there anybody here that believes that the Lord still has power? Power to heal, power to save, power to turn blind eyes. 
is worthy, worthy of the honor. Tell your neighbor he's worthy. Wow, wasn't that a powerful message? Listen, call that number on the screen. There are people that are waiting to pray for you. And if you call that number, they will listen to all of your concerns and they will take it before the Lord. I know that this word spoke to a lot of you out there. Call that number that's on the screen. Let us know how the word helped you. Don't forget to watch next week. Tell your family and your friends. We have another special guest, another powerful, powerful person of God that's going to bring forth a mighty word. Next time on Ministry Spotlight. So we're looking for an answer. The answer is your posture. What you going to do in the midst of your problem? You going you gonna to get angry? Or you going to cuss? Or you going to get on your knees and start praying? God, whatever you're doing in this season, just don't do it without me. God, wherever you're going in this season, God, just don't leave me behind. God, whatever you're doing in this season, I want to be where the glory is. I want to be where your hand is. I want to be where you dwell, God. Wherever your glory is, that's where I want to be. How many, many want to be where the glory are? That's not convincing them. I said, how many want to be where the glory is? See, the thing is, when you know you really need the glory, you run to it. Now, see, one, one thing I love about my life is that there are situations where I felt like I didn't know what to do. But because I got in the right posture and I recognized that my only answer is Christ, I ran to him. Glory to God. And I got on my knees and I prayed and I said, God, I don't know what to do. See, when you take your hands off the wheel, when you take your hands off the wheel, watch this, when you take your hands off the wheel and allow God to drive your car, glory to God, God can take you where you need to be. But see, one thing that I've learned is, hallelujah, that a lot of times we get scared because we're so used to running the show. We get fearful because we're used to ourselves running the show. We're, we're, we get so comfortable uh, with the normal. Glory to God. We get comfortable with the normal. But God is saying, I'm destroying your normal. I'm destroying your normal. This year was a year, glory to God, uh, to destroy your normal. What you are accustomed to, glory. It blocked God from being God. Hallelujah. Your ways blocked God from being God. Uh, what you thought worked uh, really didn't work so God has to destroy your normal he's destroying your normal he's destroying your normal because there's a new thing getting ready to happen and in order for the new thing to happen God has to remove the old thing out the way